Hi, everybody. Welcome to Heart to Heart. This is Marg Stark from San Diego. I'm a Hardy's admin, and this is our chat with the cast and crew of When Calls the Heart. I'm joined today by Dawn from Texas and Lori from Alabama. It's our final Heart to Heart recap in season nine with our incredible showrunner, John Tinker. Hi everybody. Oh my God, this is the last one. It, boy, this went, this season went by quickly. We were Quentin. supposed to join you up there on the water tower. Well, here I am. Okay, already. Here I am. Get your climbing Get shoes on, down. girls. You know what I kind of miss? The GL, you know, we've always talked about time being in the state of flux at Hope Valley, in Hope Valley. Boy, the geology also really. I know. <laughs> wow. That's funny. I was like, really, Mom? Really? What's happening with those you, mountains right there? Time somehow, there I don't know what happened. That's <laughs> hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Well, um, I, I feel very full. I think our hearts are just sort of jam-packed after last night. But it's very unfair to do this to admins the morning oh. after because um, we, had a, we had a late night uh and an early morning um with this very deeply moving and and frankly just exuberant uh season finale so um thank you for that john and we're going to do things a little bit differently today so i hope you don't mind if we shake things up sure okay I'm, so I'm, last week don't make we, me fall off the water tower but okay. oh yeah right <laughs> Well, Hold okay. on there, because that's a big mountainous range. Okay, <laughs> so we polled the 89K Hardys on the Facebook page last week to get their top 10 wish list for the season. Oh, right, so right. these are the things that they wanted their wishes fulfilled throughout the season. We're going to go through those. And Lori, teacher Lori, has a score pad that she's going to be keeping to see Can how well our writers did. Wow. in delivering the goods so drum roll please <laughs> coming in at number 10 hardy said they wanted to see a possible love interest introduced for nathan this season wish fulfilled okay so we have a possible love interest now that does you know i think some hardy's did want Elizabeth to be a possible love interest, um, but clearly that ship has sailed. Well, wait a second. It, sh they do have a kind of love for one another. I think that's clear at the end of the season. They are good, yes. good friends. Indeed. There's a bond that will never be broken between them. No, it's very true. Not a romantic love, but clearly an affection for each other that, and a certain What's degree the, of comfort. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Moving on. So at number nine, Hardys want more episodes, a Christmas movie mm. with love characters, so it's never enough. Wish fulfilled. I agree. Sorry. Is, is there a blame Hallmark column? <laughs> <laughs> broad shoulders. Okay. We'll, we'll put an egg the box. You know, no. uh, in your defense, you did get a little Christmas in there. So Hope Valley you really, Days. You really tried, tried to just slip it in there, fastball, right past Hallmark. Right. And I don't think anybody does ensemble the way John Tinker has done ensemble. Uh, I think we love doing it. We have a great exempt. Yeah, exempt. Exempt. <laughs> exempt. I love it. <laughs> All right. So number eight, Joseph pastoring the congregation in Hope Valley. Wish fulfilled. Wow. Love Isn't that, that neat that that was one of the, yeah, amazing yeah. that that was number eight. I love it. Number seven, Lucas and little Jack. Buddy. 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 Hey, buddy. Yes, chick. Great. <laughs> uh, is that like a, ta like an elementary school tablet? It's very teacher. It <laughs> it's very teacher. It's first grade writing paper. I brought it to my class. I love it. <laughs> It's so perfect. These production values with heart to heart. Yes. Yeah. Only the best. Only the best. <laughs> That's <laughs> hysterical. Okay. <laughs> At number six, Bill and Molly courtship. Wish fulfilled? Oh, mm. I'm showing too many of them. <laughs> Teacher fail. Teacher fail. Wish fulfilled. Yeah. Well, well it's still there. 
Yeah, could be. Yeah. I, did you love the way Johanna did that thing when she oh. comes out and he says, is, is that in the, yeah, Henry's car? Oh, yes, Bill. What? Uh, yeah, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Bad I deal. loved her driving her. <laughs> that's three. No, that's two. Would you it's like me to closer. drive? Getting oh, closer. She is funny. She yeah. is. And oh, what if she got yeah. to tell? We got to know what she got to tell. Yeah. No. Okay. Ooh. Well, okay. Moving on. Number five, Abigail returning to Hope Valley. Wish fulfilled. I, We're still I, I, wishing. I don't know if and when. I really don't. I'm not being coy. I really don't. All I know is uh, is there are a lot of folks, including myself, who would love to see Laurie Lachlan back in the family. Well, she is in the family, but back on screen. Can we get like a little like a little hash mark? Because I love that you brought Abigail into it. You know, so we ref you referenced her, um, and so it did really feel like you know well, she, she will, remains. Yeah, she will always be a part of. Absolutely. Whether she's there or not, but I'd like to see her somewhere. Partial credit. credit. <laughs> Thanks, You get points for that. <laughs> a silver star, not a gold star. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Okay, I give me a red star and a heart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a heart. There you go. Um, yeah, at yeah. number four, Mountie Nathan, happy again. Think so? Do we think I he's do. happy? He I seems do. pretty happy. Yeah. Do he certainly he's is happy. jovial. Yeah. He's jovial. Pretty, I think we are just seeing him in like without all of that baggage. So true. <laughs> yes. So I love that he has, you know, but he's still probably discovering his life as a dad. And yes. You know, but I mm -hmm. do love him. Uh, I'm, seen, I'm holding, I'm, pretty I'm, happy I'm, band. I'm waiting to put all my comments about next season until a little later. Okay. okay. All yeah. right. All right. Well, I loved his reference to Han Solo and I, you could so see that in this episode. So to me, Han Solo is a happy <laughs> so character. Funny. So it's so good. There you go. All right. Um, so here's the top three. Marty's wishes for season nine coming in at number three. Elizabeth and Lucas getting engaged. Done, Ooh. done, and done. Done. Yeah. Done. Love it. Beautiful. Done. Love it. Yes. Okay. Happy days. Happy days. All right. And coming in at number two, Henry finding happiness and redemption. Oh. Have partial credit? I mean, I do think yeah. he, he's finding some some. Yes, he's certainly finding redemption, and I think he'll find some peace there too. Mm -hmm. I I have no doubt about that. I I think some of the worst circumstances in life, with that weight lifted from your shoulder and your and faith as a part of it, it can be very transformative. So cool. Yeah, you get stars for that peace because you can't have happiness without peace. Boy, did he looked he looked, he just looked so pained and and. He had so many different emotions, um, Martin mm -hmm. did. Oh, that was amazing. So great. So, great. so beautiful. All right. And the number one wish that Hardy's wanted oh. to build in season nine. Baby, Rosemary and Lee expecting a baby. Yay! Extra credit for that oh, one. Come yes, on. yes. You get all sorts of stars for that one. <laughs> yes! Yay. Okay, so I'm coming. <laughs> I think that's a pretty darn good grade card. Despite, mm -hmm. that teacher, so despite Lori's teacher blood all over the first grade <laughs> <laughs> reading sheets, I think that's pretty good. Sure love our red pins. <laughs> I, you know, I think what's just been so clear in these heart to hearts is how many Hardy's advocates there are and how very much you guys are attuned to what we love and want to deliver that so we tr we do try there there is never a point in the writer's room where we want to you know make you unhappy or make you confused or or do anything negative like that we want this to be a place you want to go every week. well you are the professionals so we do really kind of you know have to trust that you know what's in our best interest and i think from reading the group today 
um, you know, I think there are many that are saying, oh, I was really worried after last year and, um, and but I stuck with it and it turned oh, around. Good. So good. I think that's, you know, I think that's wildly rewarding. So oh, we good. also polled the Hardy's admins and this is just as a representative of the group. And I think we're pretty representative, but we, I asked them about their favorite scenes of the season. So on their top 10 list was literally every scene. It was like, they couldn't narrow it down on the Rosemary's news. They loved her getting the news from Dr. Carter. They loved her telling Elizabeth or Elizabeth guessing at it, I guess. They loved the flutter. They loved the PJs shouting in the streets. Like, it's just so cool the way that you guys handled that giving oh, us all of that whose idea was it to ensure that we had several episodes in which to enjoy that i, I think i addressed this in part a while ago we, we just didn't want to drop the news uh, we wanted to be um we, we wanted to have some drama to it but also um it had been so long in coming again we didn't just want to rush through it and back then that book she grabbed off the shelf and, and what she read, in fact, we trimmed a little of it. That's an actual, that was the book of the time. Oh, and really? That really was a book about, yeah. about pregnancy and, and, and all those things she said about being presumptive and probable and all of that. And that's, you just didn't know back then. You had no idea. No, yes. As they say and that's here, exactly Jordan, what no um, Shannon Kirby May from Fredericksburg, Virginia, she just loved that whole diagnosis part. Um, and thought that was really fascinating. Oh, good. Um, that it wasn't so easily confirmed in 1919, and that made it very interesting for her. Yeah, I forget the title of the book, but she reads the actual title of that book, and um, I, I, I'm probably wrong, so I'm not going to cite the author, but yeah, well, I mean, and that's how typically it was found out. Well, I think in the last Heart to Heart, I was expressing my my doubt. I was like, how are they going to pull this off? Can they really <laughs> deliver? Oh. And you really deliver. <laughs> you totally deliver. Very nice. So good. I mean, the flutter. Yeah. Hey, well, come it, on. I mean, what you got Pascal and Kevin. Lee's yeah. reaction was just Pretty so hard. cute, where it's like, take it in, yes, and it's like, wait, wait a minute. Better. But they're so good. I mean, some of those those lines can fall flat, and they just they're so deft. They have they have a deft touch, and I just mm -hmm. love them. Uh, mm -hmm. I love this cast. Well, they all, uh, meaning Pascal and Kevin, they were talking about that scene itself. That that was really important for them, and one of their like their top uh, scenes that they've done, in, not just the, this season, but the whole show. Yeah. Wow! And was and, that and a new also, window? We also, what's that, Lori? Is that a new window in the row house? Well, it's a window that we've never used before. And what, what Peter DeLuise had to do was to get uh, Pascal up there on the, the scaffolding there and leaning out the oh. window. Um, yeah. Um, because there is no second floor. Well, there's a second, but no, uh, on the sets. No, that's right. There is no second floor. You're right. Got but uh, and and those scenes were a little longer than typical but again I, it warranted it it deserved it mm -hmm. we felt they'll just be really worth the time the screen time so there you go i can't tell you how many times i rewatched it oh <laughs> already yeah. yeah by the way can uh, well you go ahead and i'll i'll talk more later you okay question okay well the admins also have a soft spot for the scene where Allie calls Nathan dad for the very first time on that, on that swing near the church. So Margaret Ferreira Gonzali of Randolph, Massachusetts would love more father-daughter scenes should we get a season 10. Any ideas percolating with the writers? Maybe? Uh, you know what? I, I'm going to uh, uh, admit we're a little short on those scenes. I do like those scenes. I think they're very mm -hmm. special. And I think we we can do more of them. And we did want to do more of them. Um, as you know, we uh, you know we were short, Allie, in the beginning of the season. So we sort of ran out of time, but yes, absolutely. She's terrific, he's terrific. And, and those really strike a chord with lots of folks. Now also on, among the amends, that birthday hideout sleepover with Lucas, Elizabeth, and little Jack. 
yeah. edged out the, believe it or not, it edged out the engagement as a face. Oh, oh you mean the but, preview, the sneak preview of what life might be like over at the Bouchards? Yeah. 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 It was nice. Yeah, so, I think it was super fresh. We just haven't seen that before. And well, good. it's a lot of and, fun. And not, but, easy, not easy to shoot, again, because people laying down or sitting up and you have a child and everything. And uh, Neil did a great job, you know, mm -hmm. just a great job. But come on, that engagement, you know, we had built it so much up <laughs> in our minds. We thought maybe it's going to be in that tree house Lucas wants to build, maybe on the bridge. And of course, there's got to be all sorts of candles all over the place, but none of that. So no, and, we're and curious you know, about the genesis of that scene. How did that all come about to have on the edge of town with little Jack? We rock? had given thought early in the season to the balloon being an engagement, but but uh -huh. all of the scenes, what you needed to have was the family there. You, you needed to have, we felt you needed to have Jack there, little Jack there. And um, I just love the way he says, please let me be a, a father to your son. Oh so, my, oh, oh my, Chris. Come on. But, but, and, and it no, wasn't, we were his... originally gonna, where were we gonna do it? Gosh darn it. I, I wish, I just spoke to Peter today, fabulous Peter DeLuise, whom I love. Um, we weren't gonna do it there. We were gonna shoot it somewhere else. And, and once again, thanks to our fantastic crew and, and set deck and art department and, and everyone just working their, their guts out. It, if you saw the show, some of it looks a little drab and dreary. It was raining buckets up there and, and they had to really decorate that, that street with, with, with trees of color and hang you know, boughs of, of, of autumnal leaves in the, in the lens. So thank you to them because that really helped to make the scene. That was gorgeous. It was yeah, stunning. It, it, it wasn't originally set there. I forget where it was set, but, but at the last minute, it's one of those things that everyone has to call an audible. And, and because this crew is just so good, we were able to make the shift. And that little twirl at the end that Chris did with Elizabeth, that was that scripted or improvised? No, 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 uh, improvised. And and the oh. and, and when Jack when uh, oh, excuse me when um, little Jack yells yeah that's that was Highland. He may have been prompted by Peter, but it edited in so well. It came it was mm -hmm. perfectly edited by uh, Elizabeth Peckliner and uh, Elizabeth Peckliner and Mr. Peck and Mr. <laughs> they both those were the patients last night. The, our editors oh, were the patient. Those, I they, count that. Cool. Cancel their appointments. Anyway, she did a great <laughs> job of cutting it all together. And uh, so I, I liked watching it. You know, I, I liked watching the show last night. Yeah. Well, As this is my favorite finale. I, oh, all, gosh. All, yeah, this has been, I mm -hmm. said, yes, the last time it was my favorite oh, episode. Send me your address. We're, we're going to, flowers are on the way. Perfect. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That there were so many things, and <laughs> even when um, Henry was just presented at as a prisoner, when he got out of the whatever that thing is, transport. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, that was like I've all I was already kind of tearing up oh. because of the the town was so grateful about what he did. But anyway, so for the admins. Um, for all of us, our number one was Henry and Joseph in the jail and mailing oh. and the conversation about, I don't know how to pray. It, oh my gosh, it really gets me. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm tear up now. I know, oh. he's so, he's so mm. humble. He's so remarkably humble and broken and, and, <laughs> And Joseph turns to take his head off and turns back, and the guy's kneeling. I mean, it's just I, I, it's almost like he kind of tumbled down there. It just oh yeah, yeah. That whole thing was just. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm like, really, um, uh, Mark. It's fabulous. so moving, and so beautifully. I know. And and, and there and, yeah, and there's a lot okay. of nuance there that just he was very layered, you know. Um, Joseph wasn't presumptuous. He said, is this okay? As he handled him, handed in the, the Bible. And what I particularly loved, I mean, it really was like a Sunday school lesson. Um, and really it doesn't matter whether it's Christianity or any of the major religions, they all have three tenets of faith, which is 
prayer, scripture, and works. And the fact that he had that, you know, that that cash that he gave as an anonymous gift, the anonymous gift right. that was completely not anonymous. Right. I mean, that was so beautiful to have, you know, because faith without works is dead. And so he right. had it all right there in that moment, but, John. Yeah. Was, you know, I, I, I also love that there must have been something in his past, some some religion or some faith or some touch point. And he had obviously gone far from it. And, and yes. And he's and he just he he just admit oh it just I love the way he bro he's so yeah. broken he's yeah. so yeah. humble. Well, that performance is so. I mean, I don't know that we've had that kind of um, you know insert your your brokenness yeah. really right there. I mean, so vulnerable, and I don't know how Martin did it, but. Uh, so good. I know I, I I adore the man I really do and and I don't know him so I don't know him that well I just there's something about Martin Cummings that that I just adore and I I, I really uh, I think about him all the time and he's he's a really special man yeah really special man I agree well I think scenes like that and some other storylines that we're going to talk about they they did lend this season a sort of gravitas which is really interesting because it's this idealized world and yeah. yet you were able to interweave some things that that gave it a grounded feeling uh-huh. to it and Dawn says that for her it really you know season one is really the the hallmark by which we judge everything it's a totally different you know it was a totally different mm-hmm. show at that point so it's hard totally. to even it's hard to really compare it yeah. But um, but I think she thinks you think it stands up to to season oh, one. Oh yeah, right? well, that's a huge compliment to to us all. Thank you. We'll take that because uh, you know at least for myself, I, I look at that first season and and just think, wow, this is this is pretty terrific. And I, I think all the seasons are terrific. But it, you know, lots of folks think it's very easy to write Hallmark, and and I don't and I just don't know that it's any more difficult than any other place it is different and and there's a balance to be struck and we don't always hit it but we try and and um just we try not only seasonally uh, but tonally in in each episode and so when 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 we're successful as apparently we were last night we'll see hopefully the numbers will reflect that too but we're, we're just thrilled and it's a privilege and it's a blessing to be able to write shows like this and we trended at six. Really? Yesterday. On Twitter, yes. Oh. Yeah. That's someone the, said, the highest one said, I think that we've seen. Someone yeah. said Gustav was trending at one point. <laughs> I love I would not be surprised. Yes. <laughs> I love him. Funny. I saw Elizabeth. I saw and Elizabeth. Rosemary was, was trending too. And Rosemary. Yeah. Well. So what a blessing for us. Thank you all so much. Thank you for your support. Oh. It was, it was so good. So um, for the stories. Yeah. Well, we're thinking about Henry then. Um, He's still behind bars. So maybe if we get another season, is there any legal maneuvers that. I I don't know if I'm jumping the gun, but there's, and I obviously don't have any stories to, to tell you about, except that I just love this, the 10th season coming up and you're going to have babies and weddings and and people in jail and sick people and i mean the 10th season is just <laughs> you know they're lined up we just got to knock them down and, and knock them down in a way that will be uplifting for people and 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 have lots of fun and someone asked someone asked me i don't know if this got asked or not will we see rosemary's pregnancy and indeed you will we 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 did it such that the time jump, which which is always kind of nettlesome when it comes to a storyline, it'll be that interim. It'll be like the second trimester, but we'll definitely catch her in her third trimester. So oh, oh, there's, gonna be, of, there's gonna be plenty <laughs> of pregnancy. So excited. Fun to, is this is this a contradiction? An oxymoron? Pregnancy fun to be had? <laughs> Maybe it is. Depends on who you ask. So. Depends yeah. on who you ask. Uh, especially but, with yes. Kevin and Pascal, anything is on 
on the board. Yeah. And, and when when so we were good. all talking with Pascal about it, I mean, she, she understood uh, um, how much fun it's going to be, and Cabin will have a, a blast. And so we're looking for the tenth season again. Not being coy, I haven't heard anything, but but I'd be just stunned, shocked, and amazed if if the show were picked up. And there's so much to do, so much fun to be had. All right. Speaking of things to do, um, we it was a truly incredible scene with Bill Avery and Elizabeth and little Jack. Did I tell you you'd love that scene? Oh my gosh, watching it last night. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I watched it again last night. I thought Jack Wagner, this is as good as Jack Wagner gets. He did it all in that scene from, he really from did. humor to, uh, you know, it, uh, he's just he, the gamut of emotions he runs. No question about vulnerability it. Vulnerability mm -hmm. to yeah. fear, to love. To, it's just, I loved it. He left mm -hmm. it all. He really did leave it all right there. It was just beautiful. And, but we are really worried about him, obviously. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's, he is the mayor again. So we are kind of hopeful that that's yeah. a good side. I think I, I think I, I'm not giving anything away. We, we don't want, we want nothing to happen to him. So okay. we're going to find a way. Okay. So Molly was very animated when she got back, like she had something she needed to say to Dr. Carter, but we have no idea what that was. So as cliffhangers go. It's a little thing, but we wanted yeah. there to be something, you know, um, in, in my opinion, unfortunately, Johanna got a, somewhat of a short shrift through no fault of her own this season. And I, I, I thought it was important that we give her something just a little to hang on to for the next season, which will be bigger. Okay, she's wish so, fulfillment. So very talented, really wish talented. Wish fulfillment coming, we can hope. Yeah. All right, awesome. Um, and while we're at it, I did see, I think it was Erica on Twitter said, um, if Faith is the doctor in town, you know, does that doom her to never be able to have a romantic relationship? She has this code of ethics that prevents her from you know, having a romance with a patient, but that's kind of limiting. It is limiting, but you'll have to find a way around it if, if that's the- Indeed. Ooh, I personally, like and, and no stories have been written yet, but personally, I think they make kind of a fetching couple, the two fetching, of them. Fetching, fetching Faith. I like it. Faith and, and Nathan make a fetching couple, but that's not- Yes. It wouldn't be Nathan and May or Nathan and no one, but Indeed. we're not doing a triangle. We're, okay. It's just- I think it's much more fun to lean into a relationship than than all the other things going on. I think triangles are very difficult to pull off and to have them run for any length of time. There may be a little something, but let's just see how what a romance is like. Hallelujah. That's music to our ears. And happy Nathan. <laughs> and he's a dad and he's all kinds of things. So yes, yes. Yeah, perfect. Um, of course, we loved... Joseph and Minnie in the, I'm sure that must have been a wind machine with the- That was a wind there. machine. <laughs> yeah, I think Viv had a picture of it. If ever Natasha had put a picture of yeah, it. Yeah, Natasha had the scene. behind the scenes of yeah. the of the She is such a joy, she's such a joyous person, isn't she? Well, they're, they're both incredible and probably yes, among too. my Love favorite you. interviews that we had this season um oh, and I, I just want to i want to talk to you about that storyline because you know as i was saying before you know ha having this idealized world but then introducing storylines like theirs it's such a delicate and sensitive matter mm -hmm. um and such an important conversation you know the the admins picked that scene of minnie and joseph in the pews discussing you know, the fact that they had never disclosed to Cooper or to Angela that the doctor had refused her treatment. Um, and both of them talked about, you know, how important it was. And I think Amanda did too, how important it was for them to honor their ancestors in these roles. That puts a heavy burden on the writers, uh, you know, and, and on all of you, I think. And so they spoke of this wonderful collaboration that brought these stories to bear. And I just wondered if you could speak about that collaboration, what it meant to you and what you might. Well, it, it was a, look at my arm just disappeared. 
It was a, it was a collaboration. I'm Hang sorry. on to that water tower. It was a collaboration. Um, in fact, in in order of of people with whom I collaborated most, probably well, you know, at various points, but 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 Viv and Natasha for sure were in the top five, happily so. Um, and and what I love about where they wanted to direct the story was was the was in places like in that scene where they hadn't told their daughter and yet their daughter never complained coop was the yeah. one who had a problem even though he didn't know coop was the one and 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 angela who is blind never really wanted to know or never railed against god or any why why me it she just you know she was she, a real example of of grace mm -hmm. and and that's where Viv, both Viv and Natasha wanted to take the story. And Viv and Natasha were always wanting to take the story of, let's look forward. We want to look forward, not behind us. And maybe there will come a time when we need to look behind us. But what we need to realize now is what, what we're blessed with right now and, and, and the names of, of folks and what's the most important. I saw, I saw an episode of When Hope Calls, a lovely episode where it involved one of the, someone's father, and and whether whether um, exonerating his name was more important or was was the, you know the the truth it just all those stories me a long way and a, not a very articulate way of saying those kinds of stories I think you can deal with them lightly I don't mean um, uh, superficially I just mean lightly and and you don't have to get terrifically heavy with them and and just kiss them. And yes. some might regard that as being uh, um, simplistic, but, but- Oh, goodness, no. I hope not. I, I think there are sometimes way simpler answers to very complex problems. And we often make things, you know, it's, it's like when, when uh, Nathan said to Lucas, hey, you think too much or too little. I don't know which. Sometimes, <laughs> we, think too much, sometimes we think too little, but, but the-, the, the um, the Canfields are a family that can can really distill things down to their essence. Yes. And, and for us as, as the viewers and telling their stories. Well, I think in today's world where we often are unable to have really good and open conversations, artists have a very important role to play. And I think, you know, when Natasha said earlier this in, in the heart to heart that we had with her, that that scene was almost so much that you couldn't even you couldn't even really act it. I mean, there 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 clearly was a lot riding on that scene. And um, I just love that you all worked together and focused on the story and really gave us a lot to chew on and think about. And um, so it just you know. and again, in no small uh, way to both Viv and Natasha, I love them both very much. And uh, I've had the pleasure and the privilege of, of introducing them, you know, so. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's just more of the show isn't just hot air balloons and, you know, and candles. It's also, it's got some very telling, beautiful values, lessons, uh -huh. and um, that are at the heart of it that mean a lot, a lot to me. So thank you. Thank you. And there's also a lot of friendships going on here, and it looks like we may have a budding friendship in the works, we, because somehow you managed to include these wildly satisfying scenes last night, like Nathan apologizing to Lucas when they're out there on their, yeah. their buddy camp out, and uh, that, that whole scene, and that thing where he was, you think too much, or maybe, I love that line, I was laughing so hard. Yeah, it's true. you know, we all thought we'd get through a lot more of the season, a lot more of the, the, the relationships, but as it was, we felt we were rushing. That, that's, that relationship between those two is going to be really interesting to explore. I just mm -hmm. love the two of them, and they have fun working together, both Chris and Kevin, so uh, I look forward to more of those scenes. It's going to be fun to watch. And also, then we had Rosemary and Lee dropping Henry's story the minute that Elizabeth, their friend, appealed to them not to. I mean, no questions. They're done. Yeah. That was just, it was just amazing. By the way, I, you know, I, you'll, 
when you steal, you got to either steal from the best or, or at least admit it. There were a few lines I just ripped right out of His Girl Friday, if you remember. Oh, after, after, I love that. Oh. They're turning okay. it, okay, what are we going to do? Give them all the words you can, baby, okay. Now it makes sense. Oh, God. So it's two or three perfect. lines from that scene because it's just fabulous. And I thought of the two of them as, you know, as those two, as the characters. Yeah. Oh, perfect. I love that. And then- Well, there had been a lot of- angst on the on the facebook page about that rosemary elizabeth schism and the fact that she chose you know the store and and you know I, elizabeth did tell her it was the right thing to do but it was beautiful how you paid that off it was really yeah and good. and i think that was an easy it was an easier call you know i still think that can be a problem between the two of them but that'll have to be addressed later on mm -hmm. um and, and, and running a paper, as someone else pointed out, and a lumber mill and have a kid, something is going to have to give. So that would uh, be- Oh, yeah. Too. Right. Yep. A so lot. There. So, and then we get to the banter between Elizabeth and Nathan. <laughs> <laughs> Another friendship that's fun yeah. to explore. And clearly they're at a pretty good comfort level with one another now, now which is cool. Hey, yeah. Hey, hey, they're going to talk. You know, people will talk. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I think it's it's great. Um, uh, again, you can come out of those relationships for better or worse, and and why go through a bad time? Just go through a bad time. And I love that they've at least found a way to start to really heal. And mm -hmm. He does care about her, and she does care about him. Yes. So that's going to be interesting to see going forward. But we got to come back to Nathan and May Sue's back in town. Yes. Now, Faith has confessed to Molly her feelings for Nathan, but that she can't act on them. So talk to us about this and reassure us, please, because, you know, we just can't have one of those things, those little shapes we don't talk about. Don't be one of those shapes you want to talk about. Uh, you know, unless we get in the, the writer's room and, and really decide that's what should happen. And I don't see that happening, you know, I, I, for so many reasons. Um, mm -hmm. But but I think it's it's time for Nathan to find some some female companionship. Now, Kevin will have something to say about that. As I've mentioned early on in the season, Kevin was very involved in what he thought his character should go through this, this season in season nine. Um, I think he was happy with, with the arc of his character this season, um, but, but we would love to see him happy. And, and so... I mean, there are eligible women there and not just Faith and, and May, but there are women around and there could be new women coming in. Oh, hey, when but we spoke on priority, Hearts and Hearts. But obviously his priority is his daughter. Yes. His, his... When, when we spoke to Kevin on Heart to Heart, he seemed like he was happy with being the eligible bachelor around town. He likes that. He plays <laughs> that well. He plays that well. Solo. He, um, not that he was any better or worse. He certainly wasn't worse but this season, but he, he has... He does the guy does comedy really well, mm -hmm. uh, you know. You don't realize it at first, but you know when he was eating the ice cream and and Lucas came by and he says, uh, uh, two scoops in a cup." I, I mean, just I just, yeah. think just really egging it, just egging it. Yeah, yeah. and that we talked to Chris early um, in like in April, and he didn't realize that that was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He was the perfect straight man because he didn't yeah. even know it was gonna. I mean, that's like it's so perfect. Yeah, wow. it's so they fun. Do, they do have fun together. One question I wanted to slip in: um, the focus after the fire last night did seem to go to the stove. Is it that what the we stove. imagine? Okay, it so, was the stove. Okay, and, and, and do we know how damaged to the saloon? Not not terrifically. It was it was okay. much. It's it, you know as they said, Hickam saved the day with that. The pumper actually finally came in. To <laughs> save Hickam's the fire safety plan. Fire safety plan. Yeah, and I'm just curious, why did you retract uh, the mayor from Hickam? Um, I think that um, Ben Rosenbaum helped us realize something, which is. He's not a he's not a guy who likes to say no. 
and it was too constricting. There were ah. be the mayor, you had to say no, and you had to draw a line. And 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 Hickam is someone who really wants to find. It's not that he wants to be a people pleaser, but he wants to find a way to help. And okay. as with the X-ray machine, you're either going to be a, an infirmary or you're going to be your own private practice. But I can't help you if you're a private practice. I see. Okay. Yeah. All right. So going, just going back to the saloon, because I think there was still a little bit of hint of, he, you know, Lucas not knowing what his legacy was going to be. And he sold the oil company now. And we weren't sure what the situation yeah. was with the saloon. Do we? Well, he still owns that saloon. He'll, obviously, he'll need to repair that. But he is a man it's it's not a compelling cliffhanger necessarily but where does he go from here yes yes, yeah. yes he will become a father to jack and a husband to elizabeth but he'll need to make an income and he'll need to find something that fulfills him and, and building was... a tree house in the backyard isn't going to be enough <laughs> there's no tree as someone pointed out as a hardy pointed out there's no tree back there just an outhouse oh. well <laughs> Daddy Thornton put Jack through some paces there. I wonder, will Daddy Thornton put Lucas through any paces before marrying yes, his daughter? That will be interesting. Yeah. I'll, again, we, we I just. I mean, Daddy Thatcher, Daddy Thatcher, excuse me. Yeah, I know. We just ran out of time and, and mm -hmm. ran out a little bit of money, but not really. But, but mostly time. <laughs> Screen time. Back in the olden days, in the kinescope days when I was doing television, we'd do 24, 26 episodes. Um, and, and then you go back even before that, I'm sure there are other people saying, yeah, yeah, whippersnapper, we used to do 38 and 40, which is just staggering when you think about it. And the work was even harder. So I'm yeah. just curious. I know that um, I know that Mike Magnuson told us that the the classroom um, scenes were had to be cut back because of the COVID protocols and the lack of vaccines that were available for kids at that point. Yes. But but you did spend one of those with Lucas, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. What what was the goal of having the scene with Lucas in the classroom? Well, it was important for him to help that woman. Um, ah. But we were just to, you know. We're always testing things, even if you, you know, subtly, even if you don't realize it. Hopefully it doesn't just stick out sort of like a sore thumb and you wonder why the heck is that there? But, you know, he, he's, he's certainly qualified to teach. I don't know, maybe he'll teach. Uh, um, again, you know, part of the reason he bought the motorcycle is, oh, I'm, I'm so restless. Yes get a little yeah. something some adventure you know he is someone who likes adventure and he's very worldly and and yet he does want to settle down but how does he how does he reconcile the two of the two things not to be peripatetic to be in one spot but to have that sense of why a wide scope of the world how does he fulfill that in hope valley well he so was juggling with ali no, not juggling. It was magic tricks with Ag, right? With Ali when he first arrived. So I think it's very consistent um, with his character and perhaps with that whole idea of he's still trying to find his purpose and and maybe, you know, that wanderlust and that adventure that he used to have used to take him places and now he's exploring it internally to Hope Valley. So that's right. And I, I think once we get in the room, we'll start to to see where everyone is emotionally. You know, Elizabeth also was not that again, I think the words I used were she doesn't have it waxed there in Hope Valley. She doesn't have everything under control, but she came there to help. And it's a very different place now. And she talked about the people who didn't have access to the materials and things like that. And is it possible for her to reach those people? So they may be in a very um, yes. similar spot where they could both be together while doing something. So if you guys have any ideas, send those cards and letters. Oh, well, Hardy's already last night on the basis of the <laughs> camp out scene are like, ah, Elizabeth and Lucas can go out in the book wagon and do some camp outs. That's well, you know, that's the kind of thing. I don't know. And she's, you know, he's and never- And Mountie Nathan will come right along. <laughs> 
<laughs> let's yeah and and whatever let's have some fun you know with that yeah. is there fun to be had now well, you did or... sneak the wood chopping into the finale so how could we go wrong with that <laughs> such a he's such a he's such a scotch uh nathan uh, uh you know no wonder you you got your tent facing west and you don't have enough wood and oh, look at the fire and, yeah he was the elizabeth in the driving lesson um you know yeah. he was he That's was right. putting that campfire dousing that campfire with his mood yeah maybe they build a boarding school up on the hill and Ooh, make it like a that. summer camp i like that i like that yeah, I just want more horses, more, more horses than Elizabeth. Boy, I do too. I really I do. That. that was an ad. That was, I, I think that got a couple of votes too. The rifle trick was among the favorite admins. You know, you talk about more horses and they're real easy to write. You get some, you know, it's real easy to write down, but it's real work. And there's, it's, there's, it's, it's not without its own, you know, dangers. So mm -hmm. this finale really felt complete. Oh, but good. when we talked to Kevin McGarry, he was saying that he thought that this series or the season was transitional. So um Oh, what does he know? <laughs> <laughs> well, he was saying a good transition to 10 is what he was telling <laughs> us. <laughs> That's true. I do think it's transitional for his character, for sure. Um um transitional or not uh, there's going to be lots to do unless you wanted to talk about nine but we can talk about ninth season or we can talk about the possibilities for 10 when when nathan rides out of town and never comes back because he thinks it's a transitional season <laughs> How oh, dare he? You know, here's the, here's the rub, John, is that but, you opened the door for us to have all these heart to hearts and then people say things like this. No, they should. <laughs> they, they should. And it's fun to discuss this. It's the, Writing this show is not an exact science. And, and as I've always said, it is a true collaboration. And, and that's one of the things that's most enjoyable. It's a, yeah. it's a family collaboration. And, and you guys are all a part of that. So yeah. A well, we part. saw um, an interview uh, today, I think. Um, it was written from, um, and they were talking to Elizabeth Stewart, and she teased about that there would be more bumps in the road for uh, Lucas and Elizabeth, possibly. Yeah, there has to be. So, um, George? There has to be. Well, no, doesn't there? I mean. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I think that's that. I think that's a a natural you know evolution because they will not be in i mean they're two single people how right. do you this you know unite yeah, yeah, I, from, I, I, I know lucas doesn't doesn't we haven't even seen where he lives but i mean just just him coming over to the house now that little house and does she want to stay there there's just it's, oh, it's, oh, it's oh, fun. Heard, yeah it yeah catalyze oh, all those and, different and elements the newlywed period you know right. If you if you read the research, the first years are not the idyllic ones that we think. So there's oh. a big it's a lot of transition, particularly for people who've lived on their own. So it could be being very a father, and comical. Yeah. Plus being a father, yes, to little Jack yeah. when she there oh. hasn't been another parent in the picture. That's going to be an interesting dynamic. Too. You're not my dad, buddy. You're not oh. my dad. You're not my father. <laughs> oh, well, even for Elizabeth, that would be heartbreaking. Okay. You know, bumps that are fun, uh, you know. Like right. that. In yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. um, there was a question. Georgiana Claire Wentz from Carlsville, California wants to see the baby belly. She's asking how might the writers tackle the time jump from season to season if we get season 10? It's my it, uh, it's my very least favorite thing about this show. That that yes, interesting sure. piece of time is really un, it's a drag. And all I can say is we'll we will give you baby bumps and there will be plenty of time to have her pregnant we have you know leaving season nine we had some chronology of events when it came to 
a wedding, if it happens, and a baby, if it happens. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. And Highland just needs to stay just like he is for just um, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Put him, put him under a shelf. He can't grow. Though we did see him taking writing lessons. So I saw that. You know, I did feel in the scene with Bill Avery and Elizabeth and little Jack, without you referencing Jack's passing and all that kind of stuff, there, all the history was there. And yeah. I, I felt the presence of that, which that was, was really it, great in terms of consistency mm -hmm. and the through line of the story. It felt like, you know, that fragility of life and all of that was beautifully. I, I agree though. All of that history, um, which is why, you know, when you say, oh, great, I get to come in in the eighth season of a series, there's the only problem I had right. and, the only, and the blessing I had was how much came before I got there and how much came before I got there it was a blessing and it's a bit of a curse. Oh, sure. yeah. But, but yeah. there's so much to build on it and it really was ultimately a, a real gift. And And you just take that history and you continue to, to weave it hopefully have you not. ever done that before john come in at a show i mean not a lot of season not a lot of shows get to this point yeah, i actually have done that a couple of times okay. yeah not not nearly so deep as that but a couple of times okay um, and it's a it's it can be a little difficult if you've only got a, a little bit to build on but but you know the writers who have come before me and certainly the writers that will come after me um you, you carry on um with with what has been laid before you and and i do think that all the writers so and producers and actors and casting they're they honor this show they really do care about it uh, i mean yep 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 just you know having spoken to as many people as we have these you know partners can attest you know you have an exceptionally professional and talented group of people involved yes. with the show oh, and so, much. so, so much. it's a delight and um so before we close out our heart to heart recaps we do have a few friends that are in the waiting room so i'd like to bring them in oh. um, so we can have a final hardy's team huddle so our admin team has joined us because we just wanted to have a little Team Hardy's huddle uh, on this last recap of season nine. And hopefully to convey on behalf of the Hardys to you, John, on behalf of your whole team, um, our incredible thanks for this season. So who wants oh, to start? Thank you. Wants to start? You know what, for those of you who are old enough, it does feel a little like a Brady Bunch family here with all these little <laughs> years ago when I came onto the show, I, I, I knew it was a special show, but I didn't realize just how familial it would be and, and how important you all are to this process and it's, it's it's not a process but it wouldn't be the show without you it wouldn't be the same show without you and i doubt we might not even be on the air but more than numbers it comes down to what you all represent and who you are and 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 thank you for being here for us in every good season and bad and in between and it just means the world to to me and to brian and to michael and to brad and to hallmark and I just can't thank you enough myself and on behalf of the writers, thank you for, for continuing to be um, our supporters and, and the reason we do this. So thank you all very much. Well, in addition to writing a spectacular season that was full of really, truly amazing performances, um, you also were the champion behind Heart to Heart. This is the first season we've gotten to do this. We were thrown into it really not knowing what we were doing. And But um, you opened the door for us to talk to the entire cast and crew. And we kind of pictured, I don't know, two, three, four, maybe five people talking to us. We couldn't have imagined that we would go on to do, I don't know, even know how many, more than 30 uh heart to heart chats Good. as volunteers and, and so I don't, think I don't think i've seen them all but you've you've heard me say from the very beginning you know 
it's it's one of the joys and what one of the things that makes it easier to do this show and to make it better is is the collaborative effort and i've included all of you as well but this cast and this crew is is beyond compare and i just have been blessed to be a part of it and and i'm thrilled by it and so they should they should be here and and they to so you can hear more about what they do and they should get some attention. They, they all too often don't get the, the credit they deserve. And uh, I'm so thankful that they've gotten a chance to do that. So good for them. And thank you for providing the platform for them to do that. So many conversations that uh, we never had the opportunity. We've had uh, like a 30 second uh, response for an HFR panel, but that's it. We didn't really we didn't have the opportunity to delve into their their world. Um, so this has been just a, a pleasure and uh, I can't I can't say enough. Um, and you are the one that opened the door. So thank you. It's been my pleasure. It's always my pleasure to be able to do that. So thank you guys for making it happen too. Thank you, John, for being a hearty and thank the entire team for being hearties. You could just feel your love for the show and that's, you know, it's been so clear and it's so wonderful because we're Hardys and we love the show. So it's something that we have in common. And I know we talked before about the weaving the stories together. And this season has just been a wonderful piece of embroidery of yeah. all those stories. It has been wonderful to see those. So, and of course, with all the heart to heart chats that you helped make possible for us, you have rocked our Hardy's world. Thank you oh, so thank much. You. Well, we love doing it and thank you. Thank you guys all again. Well, John, I wanted to thank you for sharing your insights with us week after week and for supporting our heart to heart chats with the cast and crew. And most of all, for another incredible season filled with love and hope and heartfelt faith, and we appreciate everything you do on behalf of our favorite show. Oh, thank you. Well, hopefully th there'll be others to come along too. This is a rich world that Jeanette Oak has created here in which we can play. So thank you. Thank you, Annette. I just have to say thanks for the heart to hearts, for the time that you've given. And this season has been not only such a blessing to me, um, I doing these things are so out of my comfort zone. So it's made me grow. <laughs> um, but a blessing to my family too. I, this season has been so beautiful and my kids love the show and to have a show that I can sit and watch with my kids, there's, there's not a lot out there. And it's just, it's a beautiful thing. Oh, well, good. We're, we're glad we, again, we feel really privileged to be a part of that. It's a, it's, it's a shrinking supply of shows like this. And um, unfortunately, uh, for those of us who do like Jen, to, to be able to sit down and watch with our kids and, and our parents and things like that. So we hope to be doing more. And, and this is just one of them that, that provides that opportunity and, sh and shows folks who are able to make it happen that there is an audience, a, a very, a, an underserved audience. Well, I'll jump in. Um... Uh, Mark shared with our team some of the hearty comments, and I thought I'd take the opportunity to read a couple of those um, because our goal as our team was always to represent the hearties. It's not about us. It's not about, um, you know, it's not about a certain actor or a certain um, crew member. It's about all of us, and uh, we always wanted to represent the hearties. So I'm going to read a couple if that's okay. John, you're yeah. just gonna have to sit here and take our gushing. So. As long as it does, as long as it does sound like my funeral. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> like a roast. <laughs> yes, I know. Oh, Maybe we should, ro we should roast this. Uh, Lisa Tacariella. Oh, I butchered that name. I picked the hardest <laughs> names too. Lisa from Connecticut. You know who you are, Lisa. She says, I've got to say for me that that was the best finale ever. I love how the stories came together perfectly. I loved all the comedic moments that had me laughing. And I also loved the ones that brought tears to my eyes. My only hope is that we'll see Henry again sometime. Great job, writers. Great acting cast. Um, let me read one more. Who, let's see. You will see Henry again, for sure, yes. for certain. Uh, Jenny Parker Kaminsky from Smellville, Georgia says, thank you for another wonderful season and for taking time for heart-to-heart -heart interviews. I've really enjoyed them. 
And there's a bunch more, and maybe some of my fellow admins. Yeah, you know, Bill George, huh? What if my wife? Fellow Georgian. So thanks for all of that, John, and we love the season. Again, Jen, it's so, so my pleasure and to be able to, and, and these have been a blessing to me to be able to, um, it's not putting a face with a name, it's just making it real, it, it's real family. So thank you, you, you've become good friends. There's a um, quote from Darling George of, oh dear, in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it could have been for me because thank you for the best season of all oh, told you wow. about that. Uh, the last episode made me cry and gave me joy so there's so many that just love this season it, it is again what a privilege to be able to do this so thank you it's a blessing we have one from sylvia wilson of charlotte north carolina and she says this season and especially the finale completely restored my faith in love and when calls the heart. It has been absolutely fantastic this year with great writing, fabulous acting and community involvement. The finale was phen phenomenal. And thank you for drawing us into the when calls the heart family. Oh, oh great. Oh, great. Thank you. I'm getting verklempt. <laughs> <laughs> um, Tina Sprague from I'm Poplar Bluff, Missouri said, I just love how the actors and actresses take time to interact with the fans on Heart to Heart, and thanks you. Uh, one thing that I found uh, in listening to the Heart to Hearts and participating in some of them was, uh, you know, everyone um, without fail spoke about uh, the collaborative approach that you used in um, you're, uh, you know, leading the this team for the last two seasons, and they just, uh, they they just seem to glow in it. It's great. Well, the, you know, again, it was an embarrassment of riches. Uh, you surround yourself with great people, and and starting with, uh, you know, Brad and everyone else working down, Vicky Southern, Mags, and Greg, and Peter Delawi, I mean, I, I can't, I can't, I could go on, but it will be here a long time naming these people. They're all terrific. They, they, it's not hyperbole. I just, they were all in place and ready to go, cast and crew. So what a blessing. I'm going to keep this love fest going. I have a comment from Monda Holliger from Limerick, Pennsylvania, and I agree with it so much. So I want to read it to make sure I get it right. She said, I just enjoy hearing from John Tinker. His insights bring so much to our getting to know what goes into When Calls the Heart. Tough decisions are made by those around the table and we get to hear how they came to their decisions. And I can't agree with her more. There isn't a show out there where we can sit down and talk with the very person who wrote these storylines and created these storylines and hear from someone who feels like he's a fan of the fans and he wants everybody to be included and he wants everybody to be a part of what's happening and to be a part of this family and it's just so amazing to be able to have had this experience it, it is uh, i will say back at you and um we do all of us do. i can speak for everyone we do feel we're a family and um I've just, I've never had this experience before. Even when we did Chesapeake Shores, I don't know whether it wasn't organized then. I know there are Chessies now when my first season there, but but shows prior to this, I know I did them in the dark ages of television, but this is fabulous. But even so, I don't think there's a there's there's a bunch like you out there. And, and I don't mean to call you a bunch, but I don't think there's a, there's a family like this out there. And, and it, you guys are all really, really special. And, um, and, and would that we could talk to you all, all the time, obviously not possible. And, and, and I can't blame you if you wouldn't want to talk to us, but it's, these are, these are very important to us and they're, they're very meaningful. So thank you. Well, Kim kept this cool spreadsheet of the questions that we used, and it's really cool to look back on it, how many, I think we're at well over 100 now of the questions that we were able to feature from the Hardys themselves. And this week I saw a comment from a teacher that she, you know, watches heart to heart on her breaks and other people have said, you know, they kind of watch the show on Monday and then they use heart to heart to like get through the rest of the week, you know. So, um, so any, you know, 
it's been a wonderful experience, John, and we're just, I had a great time. I we're, had a great time. we're really grateful and you're patient and long suffering that you put up <laughs> no, all of our me. crazy questions. No, it's great. I've had a I've and had Hardy's a wanting their answers and wanting their tensions <laughs> relieved immediately. And you delivered all of that. I'm as impatient as the next person. Well, there you Our go. Christmas all presents right. open today. Yeah, <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> All right, uh, Dawn or Lori, you want to you want to take us out? Thank you so much. Thank you, John. Thank all the team and men. Thank all you Hardies for this these wonderful heart to heart chats. And we're looking forward to and praying so hard for season ten. Hope to see you for more. Thank you. Bye. Bye.